So you just picked up your new Google Pixel 10 or 10 Pro and clicked on this video to set it up and get the most out of it. Well, congratulations on your new phone. This video is gonna be great for anyone whether or not you're new to Android. Google rolled out a bunch of new features on these phones and you do have to enable them, so let's get right into it. First, just go ahead and turn on your phone the initial setup is very straightforward and it doesn't really matter what you pick, but I personally like to set up my device as completely new. And if you want to transfer your data from another device, you do have that choice as well in the initial setup. During the setup process, I also turned on everything that was given to me by default. Okay, so now that your phone is turned on and set up, first what I like to do is check for updates. So for that, go to settings, scroll down and go to system. Then click on software updates and press system updates. Even if it says your system is up to date, press on check for update because sometimes the update doesn't load automatically. So if there is an update that shows up, just update your phone. If not, just go back and next press on app updates. Here you'll see how many apps need to be updated. And I like to just update it all right away. And now as our default apps are updating, I like to just download all the apps that I need at the same time. So I go to play store and find all the apps that I need and just start downloading them right away. Downloading all the apps does take some time, but it's perfect because now now as they're downloading in the background, we can start tweaking some of the settings. Straight out of the box, the Pixels are really fast phones already, but as you may or may not know, Android phones can feel a lot faster. So let's set that up, go to settings, scroll down and go to about phone. Scroll all the way down till you find build number. You're gonna want to tap on this like seven times until you get this, you're now a developer message on screen. Now go back to the main setting and scroll down to developer options and click on that. From here, scroll down till you get to the drawing section and you'll want to change the following three settings. Window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animator duration scale. Change all three to 0.5 and this will make your new phone feel twice faster. Now for tip number four, stay in your settings and go to system. Click on navigation mode and make sure navigation mode is checkmarked. By default, it's supposed to be set on this, but sometimes during the setup process, people choose the three button option, which are the buttons to go home, go back, or open all the opened apps. But if you like the finger gestures like on an iPhone, then you do need the first option. If you're coming from an iPhone, this makes using the Pixel a lot faster for you because you already know these finger gestures and you don't have to learn something new. And if you want to see a video on how to move from an iPhone to an Android, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I have so many tips that would make the switch so much easier. So tip number five is in the same setting. So there's another cool gesture for all of you who like to use a chatbot for everything. If you press on the setting button here, you can toggle on swipe to invoke assistant. And now if you swipe from either of the corners, you will get your Gemini chatbot and look something up. It's great because you don't have to go to the Gemini app each time you have to look something up. It's right there on the screen by one gesture away. Okay, tip number six, and this one is so, so, so important. Please, I beg you, turn on theft protection. In your main settings page, go to security and privacy, then go to device unlock and press on theft protection. Here, go to identity check and toggle it on. What this does is basically require a fingerprint or a face ID to be able to change pins, passwords, or like remove an account from the device. And it only requires that when you're not in trusted places. Then also turn on theft protection lock. This feature just basically reacts to somebody snatching your phone out of your hand while it's unlocked and it's gonna lock it instantly. And of course, while you're here, turn on offline device lock. Theft protection features are so important, especially if you look at the US statistics and see that one in 10 people have had their phone stolen. It's absolutely crazy and it has happened to me. So just be safe out there and turn on these features. And now that that's out of the way, let's make sure that your display is set to the best quality. In the main settings menu, go to display and touch, scroll down and click on screen resolution. Switch to max resolution. But just so you know, doing so will use more of your battery as it says right at the bottom here. The battery life on these phones is pretty good, so I don't even think that it's gonna be that noticeable if you turn on that feature. Now onto tip number eight, by default, your phone is set on dark theme, and you can change that by just turning it off like this. And now it's on light theme. You can also schedule it by tapping on it and turning the dark theme on at a custom time, like from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Or you have another option like turn on from sunset to sunrise. For the next tip, within the same settings, I would also go to touch sensitivity and 
and toggle on increased sensitivity. This is especially helpful for fingerprint ID because sometimes it just doesn't want to read your fingerprint. And if you put on a screen protector, it obviously will add another layer to your display so it becomes less responsive. So definitely have this feature on. So for tip number 10, you know how you can rotate your screen like this? Well, you can actually do a bit more. If you go to the display and touch setting, scroll down, you will see here it says auto rotate screen. Just turn it on. And now you don't have to click on the button, it just rotates automatically. And if you press on the auto rotate setting, you will also be able to turn on face detection. And now if you're laying on your side in bed or on the couch while wanting to use your phone vertically, it won't auto rotate. It will read that your face is there and it will stay at vertical view. This next tip will solve the worst feature ever. And it's how by default your phone locks itself in 30 seconds only. I still don't understand how these phone companies put the default lock time at 30 seconds. Battery life, I guess, whatever. It's still annoying. Anyway, just tap on it and you can choose 30 minutes instead. It doesn't have the never feature like on the iPhone or Samsung phone, but I think 30 minutes is kind of close to never. If you're not using your phone for 30 minutes and it locks itself, you're not gonna even remember that you didn't lock it yourself and you just left it, whatever. You could actually also turn these two settings on, adaptive timeout and screen attention, which keeps your phone unlocked as it's recognizing your face and when you put your phone down, it locks it automatically. Tip number 12 is turning on your always on display. This is very important because you can use your fingerprint right away and you can see different notifications that you have on your locked screen. So go to settings, click display and turn on always on display. Also, you can now make sure that your wallpaper is still visible on the always on display. Just turn on show lock screen wallpaper. Another very annoying feature that's set by default on your phone is the brightness and how it adapts to your environment. So no matter how many times you put your brightness to 100%, when you lock your phone and then pick it up again, the brightness will dim on you. So within the same settings that you're in right now, just turn off adaptive brightness. Now tip number 14 is my favorite one, especially if you're setting up this phone for your loved one. And that's safety check. So look up the safety app and go inside. Here you can schedule check-in so your phone automatically pings loved ones if you don't respond. This is great for kids too, you can set this up for them. And if they don't respond to you for some reason while they're at school or with some friends, the app will automatically send you a ping of their exact location so you can have some peace of mind. Now let's go inside of the camera app because if you got a Pixel, one of the biggest reasons was because of the camera on this phone. By the way, this tip is only for Google Pixel 10 Pros. But anyway, as you know, now you have 100x zoom on your phone. But unfortunately, it's not enabled right away. It only goes up to 30x when you first open it. When you zoom in 30x, you will get a pop-up to download the 100x. So once it's downloaded, this is what else you have to now, if you're using the 50 megapixel camera, it will not be able to go to 100x zoom. So you will have to switch to the 12 megapixel camera. And once the 100x is downloaded and you switch to 12 megapixel, you will be able to fully zoom in up to 100x. Now it's the perfect time to go to the photos app as well. So there is a new ask photos feature where you can edit photos by just typing in how you want to edit it. It's basically Gemini built into your photos app and you can ask it whatever you want to edit on your photo. And unfortunately, as it is with so many new features on this phone, this phone is not available right away. So for this feature to become available, go to your profile in the photos app, then go to photo settings and go to preferences. Here you will want to go to group similar faces and turn it on. After doing this, you will need to wait a few days for the ask photos to be available on your device. And once it's available within the same preference settings, you will see a new feature that you will have to just turn on. So here's tip number 17, please back up your photos. By default, your Google photos are not going to be backed up. I don't know why. So just go ahead and tap on your profile again and press on backup photos. Now when you'll want to upgrade your phone in a few years, all your photos that are going to be backed up are going to appear in your new device as well. Of course, as long as you're signing in with the same account. So the next thing in the setup process that I like to do is customize my phone. Long press on your home screen, go to wallpaper and style and choose AI wallpaper. This is what I like to use. Here, just fill in the words and you will get your own wallpaper that no one else has. After this, you can also scroll down and go to icons and toggle on themed icons. And now your app icons will match your wallpaper, which just makes it look so much better. Another thing you could do with your wallpaper is having a live wallpaper. It will literally rain or snow depending on your location's weather. To set it up, long press on the home screen, go to wallpaper and style, then press on live effects. Here you can choose a picture that you like from your photos app, then click on weather and make sure that it's on local. But you can also change it so it's always on fog, rain, snow, sun, 
and you can tweak the intensity of it. I really love this. I put it on local and I literally cannot wait until winter because when it snows outside, it's going to be snowing on my display too and it's just gonna be perfect. And if you're not into that, you could also add a 3D effect to your wallpaper by just going to cinematic and save it. Now if you move your phone, it will have a 3D effect where the foreground will be separated from the background. Have fun and don't settle for static images. Now tip number 20 is you can also customize the clock font on your lock screen. Within the same settings, switch to lock screen here and then go ahead and go to clock. You'll see a bunch of different fonts you can choose from and you can of course change the color of the clock as well. And when you're happy with your clock, you can now also change two of your shortcuts on the lock screen. For example, if you're used to having a camera and flash shortcut like on an iPhone, just choose those two instead because they're not set as default. You can also go ahead and put your name on your lock screen. Just go down here, press more lock screen settings and tap on add screen on text. Put your name in and that's it. And now your phone will feel more personalized. You can obviously put something funny on there too. Up to you. Now if you got the big pixel, the Pro XL, you should try this out. Long press on the home screen, go to wallpaper and style, scroll down and go to layout. Here I would suggest you go for small icons and widgets. Since you already have a large screen, it's not gonna look too overcrowded even if you have a lot of apps on one screen. I personally love how it looks on the Pro XL, so if you also like it, go for it. Tip number 22 that you should consider is a very similar gesture to an iPhone. You know how on an iPhone you can swipe down to search like an app or something? Well, Pixel has it too. Long press on the home screen again, then go to home settings, then go to search settings and turn on swipe to search. On an iPhone, you need to swipe down, but on a Pixel, you need to swipe up instead. Now, if you can't find a certain app, you just swipe up and look it up. This is so much easier when you have too many apps. Now, tip number 23 has to do with the phone app. Tap on the three lines and go to settings. Then make your way here and turn on automatically screen calls. Here, as you can see, you can set it on basic protection, medium, or maximum. So basically what this does is screen the numbers that are calling you on your phone, and if your phone identifies it as spam, it automatically declines it. I like to have this on medium. It does a very good job at screening unknown or suspicious numbers. Now, tip number 24, while you're here in your phone settings, scroll down and go to caller ID announcements. By default, it's going to be on never. If someone calls you and you want your phone to say who it is before you even pick it up, Put on always, but you could also put it on only when using a headset, which if you're using headphones, you will hear the name or the full number of the person calling you. Now with the next tip, let's get into the modes on your Pixel. We all set our phones on do not disturb sometimes, but we can actually customize it to fit our needs. If you go to settings, go to modes, you'll get three modes that are default and you then can even create your own one. Let's go to do not disturb. On this page, you can choose people that can interrupt it. For example, if you want calls or messages to still show up from certain people while you're on Do Not Disturb, you can do it here. Then if you have notifications that are important from apps, for me it's Gmail for example, you can set it that that app can interrupt your mode and the notifications will still go through. And if you click here, you can see that alarm and media sounds are turned on by default, but you can also add things like reminder and calendar invites to be able to show up while you're on Do Not Disturb. And lastly, you can even play around with the display settings and toggle on things like grayscale, disable the always on display, dim wallpaper, and enable dark theme while you're on Do Not Disturb. I really love how customizable the Pixel is, so let's get right into the next tip. This is very cool and it's also about Do Not Disturb. Let's say you're out with friends and you don't want to be interrupted by your phone while you're eating dinner with them. Well, you can go to settings, scroll down and go to digital well-being and parental controls. From here, click on flip to shh. Basically what this does is when you flip your Pixel face down on the table like this, it will slightly vibrate and that will let you know that Do Not Disturb was turned on. You can then relax with your friends and eat your dinner and not get interrupted by your phone. And when you're done and go pick up your phone, Do Not Disturb will turn off. Now for tip number 27, I don't know if anyone knows this, but your Google Pixel comes with its own free VPN service. Go to settings and then click on network and internet. Then click on VPN. Here you will see VPN by Google. You can then follow the on-screen instructions and set it up and connect it. If you didn't know, VPNs are really good if you're in public places or using public Wi-Fi. It will basically hide and protect your information from potentially getting stolen. And you can easily turn it on and off as well. And this goes right into tip number 28. Instead of going to settings to turn the VPN on and off each time, you can add it into your quick settings. So if you swipe down with one finger, you'll see that you get your quick settings with a few buttons. And if you swipe down again, it expands and you have more settings. But you can also get to the extended version by just swiping down with two fingers. 
Well, when you're using your phone with only one hand, it's really annoying to get to the settings you want by swiping two times. And obviously you can't use two fingers. So let's customize the quick settings instead. Press on the pen button here, and here you can go off by removing and adding different quick settings. These are the first four that will always show up, so put something extremely useful here. If, for example, VPN seems like a useful setting that you will access frequently, press on the plus and move it up to the top four. And that's how you can easily rearrange settings and fit your own needs. Now for tip 29, it's pretty hidden, but it's a button on the back of your phone. I know, I know, iPhones have it too. But if you just get a pixel, it has it, so why not use it? So go into settings, click on system, and go to gestures. Then press on quick tap to start actions and turn on use quick tap. From here, you can select what you want with the gesture, like take a screenshot, turn on the flash, or open a certain app. Sometimes this works a bit too well without you actually double tapping the back of your phone. So for this, you can turn on require stronger taps. This will definitely get rid of some sensitivity. Last but not least, for tip number 30, let's go over Magic Q. Magic Q is a new feature on the Pixel that proactively suggests information and helpful actions that are relevant to your current context. For example, while you're chatting, calling, or searching. Magic Q will do this by using information from your Gmail, calendar, messages, keep notes, screenshots, and even contacts. But of course you do have to turn it on. Go to settings, scroll down, and press on Magic Q. Opt into use foundational data, recent screen activity, and use data from specific apps. And definitely make sure that you update your Magic Q. And wait about an hour until it fully downloads, unless it's already downloaded. And you're all set. And those were the first 30 things you should do on your new Pixel 10 and Pixel 10 Pro. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos. I'm currently working on the advanced tips and tricks for these phones, so make sure to not miss that video. I'm signing off now, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.